So next up, we have Sean Moser. He's the Vice President of North America Sales at Elastec based out of Carmi, Illinois. Mr. Moser has been with Elastec for 13 years. Sean's worked closely with many pipeline and railroad companies to identify the best available spill equipment for their waterway crossings, including many high current and shallow waterways across the US and Canada. Sean provides training for the suite of Elastec equipment and is also an active member of the ASTM F20 committee, which provides standards for oil spill response. And Sean, if you wanna pull up your slides through share screen. Uh, today, Sean's gonna be discussing Elastec spill response tools. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, pleasure to be here uh, with the, for this opportunity to talk about Elastec and kind of what we're up to in spill technologies. Um, we've actually been at this several years now, and um, I'm going to be focused more on inland spill technologies than anything, as that seems to be the most popular uh, in our arsenal today, as it is more expensive to, to explore offshore at this time with oil prices like they have been. So we're focused quite a bit on the inland technologies. Um, next slide, please. Okay. So Elastec is located there in Southern Illinois. We're kind of actually right between uh, St. Louis and Louisville, Kentucky. So St. Louis, Missouri, Louisville, Kentucky, that's connecting via I-64. And we're kind of right as you're heading west out of Indiana would be your first exit in the small town of Carmi, Illinois. It's about 5,000 people. Um, this is home. This is where our founders grew up and uh, where they started this company actually 31 years ago now. So. Just wanted to share that. Next screen, please. Okay. So this is our third meter boom vane. Uh, this is our latest addition to the boom vane lineup. Uh, we've actually had it for a few years now, and it allows us to get into even more shallow bodies of water with the boom vane technology. So the way the boom vane works is it actually grabs the current, much like a kite grabs the wind, and it'll swim away from you. So when it grabs that current, we can have boom in tow and it'll pull that out into a waterway where it can collect or deflect oil that's moving down that waterway. Um, the third meter allows us to get into really shallow creeks and rivers. Uh, the kind of the rule of thumb here is really you need about one knot of current to do that. Uh, we also use boom vanes that work with vessels. So vessels of opportunity that can actually tow the vein and the vein will swim away from them. Of course, they're creating their own current in that situation. So this is a, a picture of the third meter. If you'll go to the next slide. Uh, this is a boom vein in action in the Wabash River, which actually separates us from Indiana here in our location. So we're showing you here just kind of what the, all the lines hooked up to the boom looks like. And then of course the river is running from, would be the left of your screen down to the right. And that's where, uh, where it's gonna get its one knot of current to pull that boom that you see in the water out for collection in this case. Next slide, please. This is the boom vein lineup here. So you see that third meter is our smallest version. Then we have a half meter version. Uh, we go from there up to the one meter and then up to a one and a half and all the way up to two meters. Uh, typically one meter is kind of where we start switching from river uh, to more of a coastal or offshore application depending on how big the sweep is and the vessel is that they're wanting to deploy boom from. So that's kind of the break point and then one, one and a half obviously is, is a deeper water boom vein as well as the two meter. Um, next slide please. Okay. Terra Twist Anchors. This is an anchor kit that we're offering that uh, can be applicable to about any shoreline opportunity. So as we're working through creeks and rivers, a lot of times there's not a good substantial tree or anchoring point. So we have these Terra Twist Anchors, which essentially are a four foot um, screw that you can screw into the earth. So depending on the soil content, the type, how rocky it is, uh, the strength can vary quite a bit, but it offers you an opportunity to put an anchor along the shoreline where, as you need it, uh, when you need it, where you need it. So next slide, please. Okay. Uh, this is just an example of what we call brute boom. And this is a heady debris boom that we manufacture. Uh, 
primarily it's used in dam applications, so like hydro dam or where their cooling water is to keep debris out of there and power plants, uh, typically along major rivers or other bodies of water. It could be a lake as well where debris gets in there and they just want to keep it out or they want to keep fish and wildlife out of these intakes. Um, however, this boom could be used in spill response as well. So in spill response, some of the applications could be, let's say you're working on a river and uh, you have a lot of debris that's working its way down into the spill zone. Well, this boom could be deployed north of that spill uh, where it could capture that debris prior to getting into the oily area and make it where you have less oil debris that you have to clean up. It also has an application with ice. So if you have broken ice in a river and once that ice gets into your oil zone where you're trying to contain and skim, it becomes challenging because you're dealing with broken ice, which is essentially debris that you have to, you have to handle and, and send to the and properly clean uh, during an oil spill. So if you could block that off up north and keep this out of the area, uh, that's an opportunity for the brute boom. If you'll next screen, please. And this is just an example of the brute boom in, uh, in a river where it's actually holding back a lot of the debris I mentioned, so you get an idea of all the sticks and waste that get tied up into it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, brute bridge, this is uh, where we've actually taken the brute boom and we've uh, taken those in um, parallel and we've built a deck over them so that we have a universal walkway built out of that same product. So we could do that and still have debris screens under there to capture debris. Um, it's a walkway for many opportunities. Uh, we actually have, have had this deployed on a spill um, by a major railroad. So they were having an issue and it was cold weather at the time. So oil had found its way into an icy ravine. And in that ravine, the ice thickness wasn't, wasn't enough to support the, the operator, the contractors weight. So they actually deployed these type of walkways on top of the ice, which allowed them to have access to the spill and perform their cleanup duties. So just a, a variant of how some of this could be used in spills. Uh, next slide, please. American fire boom. Um, this is kind of our oldest fire boom technology. It's actually what we'd consider a first generation fire boom that was originally developed by the 3M company uh, many years ago. And it's probably still one of the ones that's out there in the most quantity. Um, there is a small version of this, uh, an eight inch by 12 inch. So that's eight inch freeboard, 12 inch draft. And that's more of an inland fire boom technology. And the idea being there is that you could burn inland, you could burn coastline, uh, marshes, those opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. And this is kind of an example of some rail incidents where there has been fires. And of course the American fire boom in waterways like this, you could deploy them and maintain that oil there. Uh, sometimes that oil is on fire, so you could contain that fire right there and not let it spread as well. Um, and the fire boom technologies are built to where they can withstand the burns and the heat of these oil burning fires. Next slide, please. Um, Threw this one in there because it is uh, one of our latest developments. So this is enhanced hydro fire boom. We do also build the, this is what I call a second generation fire boom. This is water cooled fire boom. And uh, what happens here is we're pumping water in through these pipes and actually saturating this boom the whole time during a burn so that the heat of the burn doesn't make a failure in the boom and you're allowed to get longer burns and continuous burns with this setup. Well. Our latest version, the enhanced model, is actually bigger than what we had supplied uh, and used in Macondo. And it's actually a 22 inch freeboard with a 19 inch draft so that we can get into larger sea states with it. So more rougher water conditions, doesn't really fit with the inland water theme so much right now, but uh, wanted to throw that in there as something that is available and um, gets us into larger sea states. Thank you. So the circus skimmer, this is the fast water skimmer. And what we're doing here is we're actually creating a whirlpool in the skimmer. Oil comes down, much like you see the foam in the photo here, and it gets into there and creates a whirlpool, so it gets locked in. Then this weir setup actually drops down below water level and pulls that oil in and then just pump back to tank or temporary storage. Uh, next slide, please. 
it's also available with the drum insert. So in the other one you saw where it was just a weir in there and we're pumping that with an external pump. Well, in this one, we're using the drums like we use on a lot of our drum skimmers that are well known throughout the industry. And these drum skimmers are selective and they're 90, 95% efficient depending on the type of oil that they're trying to recover. And in this case, we have groove drums in here. They're actually counter rotating as that water and oil comes in and generates that whirlpool that comes in contact with these drums and we're able to wipe that off efficiently and then pump from there. So we're not processing a lot of water. Uh, next slide, please. This is just showing you all the different models of the circus skimmer. So the top one is like we saw on the first slide there with the foam. That's just a standard weir setup. It uses an external pump to remove that. So an external pump or a vacuum truck or um, some kind of external suction. Uh, down the left-hand side is your counter-rotating drums, like we saw in the most recent slide. And then on the right hand side, this is actually a weir type, but it's using our E150 pump, which is a pump that's very popular with our drum skimmers and it's been used in industry for several years. Um, we went this route because several people have our drum skimmer systems that already have these pumps, so they can use that pump and they can use the power units that are currently in the marketplace as well. So um, trying to make it where you have more universal tools to assist in jobs because as we know in spill industry, that there's not really one tool to, to meet all the needs for what you run into in a spill scenario. Um, go to the next slide, please. So this is the filter belt skimmer. Um, we actually resurrected this product um, through an alliance we had with um, Quijack and Marco a while back. And so this is what they used to call the sidewinder. And so we, we manufactured this, um, it has its opportunities in that it's great for processing oil debris. It does very well with the medium to heavy oil viscosities and it'll recover those via the belt. But that oil debris is really key here because it can pick that up and then you can have somebody, oper an operator at the tail end there or up top who can actually pick that and bag that oil debris so that you're getting it um, transferred to the right location and you're getting it out of the waterways as well. Next slide, please. And this is just another photo of that skimmer actually showing you off of a landing craft. So this is working off the side of that landing craft. Of course, it's capable of working off the bow if needed. Um, lots of opportunities for vessels of opportunity here with this type of skimmer. Uh, next slide, please. This is what we call Inlander Boat and Barge. Um, so this is actually one of our most popular boats right now. It's a all fully welded 316 aluminum boat. It has a 4,000 pound payload and uh, you can fit quite a bit of equipment and gear in there. This particular model is shown with a full wheelhouse. Um, this was actually built for the city of Chicago and they use that to go longer distances to take care of the waterways for the trash and debris that finds its way into the Chicago River because of the combined sewer system. Well, this type of tool gets them several miles downriver so that they can meet the requirements there. Uh, next slide, please. This is just another version of that inlander boat and you can see it with oil spill response equipment in here. Um, we've been using these quite a bit for booming opportunities for oil spill de deployment uh, boom. Also for personnel haulers, trash and debris service, as I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, we've even sold these into the carp fishing industry. So we've got the invasive carp fish that are making their way through the Midwest. And uh, it's, since it has that 4,000 pound payload, we build this in a 22 foot version and also a 32 foot. And that 32 foot gets us up to about an 8,000 pound capacity. And so it's uh, quite a sight to see that full of carp. Next slide, please. Uh, they can be teamed together as well. So you see them here where there's actually one with no power, but it's using the, the vessel behind it to, to operate it and move it. So you can fit more gear or whatever you might need to transfer in a spill type situation. Um, next slide, please. This is actually what we call the X30 cassette. So this is a groove disc skimmer. It's two disc 
And normally there's a filter belt in there, a Marco filter belt. And it's one foot, very similar to what I showed you a few slides back. And so it's great for, this is actually not to replace that, but more of an alternative. So if you're getting into light to medium oils, these groove discs work very well there and they're very efficient. Uh, so you can remove that Marco one foot filter belt. You can put in a two disc skimmer and you have a really nice light oil to medium viscosity oil skimmer that works very efficiently. Next slide, please. This is just a top deck view of what you would see there. And of course, we're using some of the same hydraulics that are already available on these vessels to, to operate this. Next, please. This is just another view, so you can see it from a different angle. Um, so the belt normally runs in that channel, and that's where we're at. Yeah, go on, please. This is an example of our drum skimmer. So that's a TDS 118 skimmer. It's actually hooked to a vacuum trailer that we manufacture here in Karma as well. Um, we focused a lot of those on spill response in the beginning, but we're finding several opportunities outside of spill response for these um, as many industrial applications need a way to, to suck up waste as well, or just waste water. And, uh, Typically, it's a thousand gallon tank. We offer them with a, just a blower or a vacuum pump. Vacuum pumps allow us to, to build pressure in the tank after we've recovered our fluid, and then we can blow that off and transfer it as it needs to. So next slide, please. Another shot of that groove drum skimmer, as we saw in the last one, as I mentioned earlier. So this is kind of what started our company actually 31 years ago. So next month, we'll celebrate 31 years. And uh, it was started with a smooth drum skimmer, very similar to what you see here, and uh, kind of all happened after Exxon Valdez and, and let our founders see that there was a, a need for this type of technology. Uh, next slide, please. This is just an example of um, oil spill workshops. Uh, a lot of times we'll, we'll host these locally and we'll bring in industry experts who can speak about spill scenarios, lessons learned, et cetera. And essentially what we're doing is we're hosting those and we're providing the equipment uh, for the event. And it's typically two days on water and one day in the classroom when we do those. Next slide, please. Um, this creek spill kit, um, it's proven fairly popular. This is uh, something that'll fit in the back of a pickup truck uh, or you could be forkliftable and, and move to the ditch or creek so that outfall could be contained um, in more of an industrial spill. So much like uh, Donnie was talking about earlier, if you can catch them there uh, before they get into the bodies of water, that's always a good idea. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is our latest uh, addition to the last tech lineup. So we, we recently purchased what's called the Jensen Lake Mower so that we can mow aquatic weeds. Uh, this also applies to spills because if you have a spill on a lake or pond and you've oiled those weeds and vegetation, sometimes you have to manage that and remove all that so that uh, new growth can come in. So this is something that could be used in that situation to, to manage the weeds. Next slide, please. Uh, do a lot of customized spill response trailers. Um, this is one, just an example of some of the equipment that we put in those. Um, a lot of this varies depending on the river crossings, the bodies of water um, for many inland spills. And as you get into remote areas of the country, they have to have their own equipment. So rather than relying on contractors, because it may be several hours before they could get on scene. And this is just an example of, of a spill response trailer. Next slide, please. Uh, just an example of a portable vacuum system and also how we go into a drum via the drum at head. Um, next slide, please. Running out of time here. And then uh, real quick, uh, one thing that we've been working on with actually with BMSF Railroad is some non-floating oil curtains. So we build curtains. We've done that for turbidity for years and years. Actually, the American Marine side of our business started back in 1967. So we've been building curtains for many years, and that's the vinyl products, oil containment booms. And so they were looking for a solution because they have a lot of oil containment booms in response trailers, like we just saw, stationed throughout the West. 
and they were looking for a way that they could actually add to that oil boom that they currently have and maybe kind of piecemeal what they need to do on site. And so that's what we're showing you here is we built some panels. Some are permeable, um, some are solid, and then some are kind of oil collecting, but water permeable. Um, and that's what these slide is showing you is how we would essentially lay those out. If you go to the next one, please. Um, and then you can see when it's in the water, we'll actually attach a panel to existing oil containment boom. And then if we have to for water depth, we can attach an additional panel on that. And then we put the ballast chain and essentially make a curtain like this um, and build those as needed per the water crossing or the issue. And then the next slide. And this kind of shows you in a water flowing application, you would do the same thing, set your anchors and collect that to where we can hopefully stop some of this non-floating oil from passing the curtain. Um, next slide, please. And any questions? Awesome, thanks, John. I'm gonna give Jenna a second to reconfigure. So the curtain, the NFO curtain, has that been tested in situ? It has not yet. So um, we actually developed that. We, we delivered it to BNSF and then COVID hit and they haven't had as many training opportunities or chances to, to use it and further develop that. But that's their goal, just to get some of those in place this year. Awesome. All right, Jenna, are we ready for questions? Yeah, we have several. Uh, first one from Susan Kralla, do all the boom veins need one knot of current or do the larger veins need more speed? Uh, one knot seems to be enough uh, to make it swim away from you. They are capable of working. Um, I've actually seen them in rivers that go up to five knots. So in that case, uh, they do generate a lot of lift and, but they are capable of working as long as you have a minimum of one knot, uh, that seems to be kind of the, the point to get it started. Great. Next question from uh, Christy McKinney. Would you consider the circus skimmer to be an advancing skimmer? Um, I would not. I, I think it's a stationary skimmer, but it, it has, it works best with current. Um, it, actually, it's a great question because we've tried to figure out how could we test that. And at onset, of course, we would have to advance it through the tank. But the dynamics of that are somewhat different in the way that you tow on it versus the way you try to hold it in position. And so that's always been a challenge. So it's a great question. And I, I think it's more stationary, but for moving water. Great. And last one, uh, what is the payload capacity of the inland barge without motor? Um, without motor, it, it's a 4,000 pound capacity for the 22 foot version. And then we have an 8,000 pound capacity for the 32 foot version. So we would, if you add motor and add console and other weight, of course, we're taking away from that. That's, that would be the max. Great. We did have um, a comment come in from Kurt Hansen that said the uh, Coast Guard towed circus through onset. Uh, in late 1990. Oh, okay. I'll have to do a little research on that. Thank you, Kurt. And I believe that is it for questions. Well, well thank you. Thanks, Jenna. Thanks, Sean.